but but the big understanding is that we are in a war, the spiritual war, and God uses you know everybody from the foundation of the world. He has provided, prepared, put the gifts in, identified. You know, He's prepared the vessels, um, you, I, the man, different different ones, different ways to do a specific thing for the time, for such a time as this, whether it was Esther or it was King David or whoever it was. So, but but we cannot re- refuse God's call. God says, I, I created you, I perfected you, performed you. Yes, you're weak. Yes, you have flaws. That's okay. I'll be with you. I, you know, I'll take care of that. Just follow me. Just give me what you have. Give me the five loaves and the two fishes and don't worry about the, the rest of it because... But many men say, well, I can't do that. Women, like, who, who am I? You know, um, I can't, I've got nothing to give, nothing to say. And so they just bow out. They just excuse themselves. And what it really is, is the enemy tempting you to unbelief, to not believe God, not to step forward, not to take the step of faith. I remember when we were, you know, we've had to take several steps of faith in our life. And, you know, steps of faith, stepping out into what you don't know. You feel you're supposed to go there. Men take that leadership role, but you, you don't have all the pieces in place. You don't have all everything figured out. You're just acting, taking a step of faith to lead your family to another place or take a different job or 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 step up in the into the church and, and, and do something. And you know what? The problem is um, it's not just all the jobs in the church. There's so many jobs outside of the church that belong to the body of mm-hmm. Christ that need to be done. I was just thinking of the man who, um, uh, there's this new movie coming out called Sound of Freedom, Sounds of Freedom. And this, this it's the story of this man. I think he was a Navy SEAL. I'm not sure, but he took it upon himself. He's a godly man to begin to rescue the children that have been bought and sold in sex trafficking. And he and, and some of his team, they went out to do that. So they made a movie of his of his life. But here I'm thinking is a man, I'm sure he doesn't do much in the church. You know, he probably isn't a deacon. He's probably not taking up the offering. He's probably not, you know, teaching Sunday school class. But he found a place in God where God called him, and it's not just in the building, to go outside and minister to the body, the church of Jesus Christ, the will of God, the kingdom of God, to do something different. And I think we have to look Mm -hmm. to the kingdom of God to do something in the kingdom of God, not just in the church building that we think of as a church building, you know, because there's limited jobs there mm-hmm. and you can move the chairs around or you can set up the mic or you can, and that's all good stuff, but God may call you outside of that building. There's a, there's a young man right now that's leading a great movement uh, for the Lord in, in uh, not far from us here. And he was uh, five years ago, he was in prison. He was, a, he, was a, he was lost. He was in prison, and he is, he's got a great, and he's free from drug addiction. He's leading. A, it's a great movement of people that have been involved in a lot of addictions, and they're just, they're coming to know the Lord. They're sharing their testimonies. You know, demons are being cast out, and so forth. We have, for example, uh, another good friend that, as a teenager, he was very, very rebellious. In fact, he fled to another state because the police were after him so much. Well, he came to know the Lord, and then he became a police officer. Then he became a, 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 a standative, and now he's a, a, state rep- a state senator, just standing for Jesus mm-hmm. in, in a powerful setting. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, there again, it's, it's not, we, we tend to think of, just these conventional positions, jobs in an organized church body, but there's so much out there oh, that needs to be done. Yeah. That needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And God does not just call us to just serve inside a building. Mm-hmm. He's called us to, you know, the the field is the world. Yeah. Jesus said, "Go into all the world." He said, "Did he said didn't he didn't say go into the church building mm-hmm. and preach the gospel? He said, go into all the world. Mm-hmm. All the world means all the world." That so so God's sending you out there to be uh, to to be His His light and His salt. Well, in yeah, these days. and part of it is too that the mandate is the harvest to bring in the harvest. And when you're harvesting, there are many different jobs, positions, and things that need to be done to bring the grain 
from the field. So yeah, you don't harvest by sitting around in your house. Yeah. You go out into the field or you go out into the garden. So this is where the men and women are to be going into the where the broken are, the, the highways, the hedges, to compel them to come in. And this is the work of God. This is the greatness of God putting a, a mandate or a mantle or an anointing on someone to do something. And here's the deal with the anointing. We can't be anybody else. I can't be, you know, the next great author or the next great preacher or the next great guitar player. I can only be who God has called me to be and, and to recognize that anointing. So when you understand what God has anointed you to do, like he's anointing you guys to broadcast, to preach yeah. and teach with the technologies and interview skills and things, that's your anointing, that you like to do it. It's easy to do. It works. It works. Men especially are in find their anointing, not where they're shoved into some little square peg in a round hole, but where they actually fit in their job, in their ministry, in their uh, in their calling, they're happy and they're excited and they're motivated. I think for us, one of the problems with us was for a long time, um, in the beginning of our when we were young, trying to figure out what we were supposed to do with our lives. And we had just gotten saved when we were in our twenties, early twenties, and we were just. I remember we were just pondering, well, what should we do? You know, you know, now that we're saved, what, what does God want us to do? Mm -hmm. And ultimately what we came up with was that you were going to go into the ministry, you know, at, as, as we knew it at the time, pastoring, that was what we knew at the time. And the track that you followed to get into the ministry, obviously was to go to a Bible school and get the, the education, the, the credentialing. That's the way it was back then, even though that's pretty unscriptural. Because, you know, Peter and James and those guys, they were unlearned men. They could write after a while, obviously, um, but they didn't go to Bible school. And so, but we, that's the only thing we knew at the time. So again, you start out, you take a step of faith. You don't many times taking a step of faith. I remember us going to uh, the Bible school we went to and we were young and poor, very broke. We had three children and you had worked as a, a common laborer in a in a lumber mill for many years, sawmill. And so when God said go, I think we went with a total of um, what was it, 150 bucks, dollars? Yeah, uh, about 150. Yeah, and we had no, we had we had to, we'd have to pay rent, we had to pay a house payment, we had no place to, you know, to, we had no books, we had no money for tuition. We, God just said go, and it was amazing how He met us in that step of faith. And I remember leaving the Bible's college after several years when we were graduated or Jerry was graduated. And I said, well, the only thing we really learned there was how to live by faith. <laughs> yeah. The, God proved his, his faithfulness. faithfulness. It's, it's a matter of hearing from God. You, you have to hear from God and you step out. Mm -hmm. It says of Abraham in uh, I think it's Hebrews 11 by faith. He went out, he obeyed, not knowing where he was going. Right. God said, go, other people said, Abraham probably thought, Abraham, you're crazy. What are you doing leaving your family? You're mm -hmm. going here to go and do this right. and that. Mm -hmm. But he'd heard from God. And, and it, you know, when you hear from God and you take that step, even though if you, you don't know what the outcome is going to be, you don't know exactly what's going to be involved, but you'll see. Mm -hmm. You see the Lord mm -hmm. is faithful, faithful and mm -hmm. he comes through for you. And the other part of that is, you know, people around you will say, you're crazy. What are you thinking? Why are you doing that? Because people want us to always stay safe and and do the traditional and stay with the the accepted route of everything. And I think being safe is a big buzzword, you know, because people are fearful and anxious and what's going to happen and you're gonna, not going to have enough money and, and all this stuff. But Jesus never said to be safe. He said he who seeks to save his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will keep it. And I think for and going back. Back to the word adventure, I think the adventure is following Christ mm. and to see that's real life. Now you're not playing, you're not pretending, you're not, you know, doing what other people want you to do. You're you're being true to yourself and following God. And um and that becomes exciting. That is life right there. Mm.